Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we are fixing this M4. If you've ever been in one of my streams, you'll probably have seen that I'd love to review people's builds in Raid and this particular M4 was one of the most intriguing yet. After hauling it back to the hideout, despite looking pretty meta, I discovered that this one could be seriously improved. Okay, so what intrigued me the most about this particular M4 is that it clearly has had a lot of money spent on it. This is not a cheap weapon at all, and yet the builder of this particular gun has missed the mark a lot. They've managed to build a kind of pre-patch 14, sort of 12, 12 and onwards kind of M4, but without really utilizing any of the extra parts that allow you to make this M4 good. And that's what's truly special about this particular weapon. I love reviewing people's guns because it gives us an opportunity to teach people how to build better weapons. I don't really want to shame anybody for things they're making, or if they decide they want to run something budget and that's completely fine but this person has attempted to run a meta weapon that costs a lot of money and they just haven't got the performance out of it so the very first thing i would like to point out is that we're going to keep the same theme of the weapon so we've got the razor on here which i'm actually not going to change so we're going to keep the lpvo we've got a 60 round drum mag which obviously has some implications for ergonomics and we're also suppressed so i'm not going to change any of that stuff and we're probably going to keep most of the build reasonably similar ish so the first most important point about this is the suppressor. So in patch 14, all of the 556 suppressors were adjusted and changed so that now there are four suppressors at the top and the combination of the suppressor and the muzzle brake give you the same recoil across all four. And the Thor is in fact one of these, but the Saker is another one and the Griffin is another. I'm going to pop the chart up on the screen so you'll be able to see exactly which ones these are. But if you want to make the best build possible, Seika and the Griffin now have the same. They used to have like half a point of recoil between them. So that the Seika was technically the best in slot, but the Griffin had more ergo. This is now not true. The Griffin basically just has more ergo now. So this is the G-Lock muzzle brake. And then onto this, you put on the M4 SDK. Before we go any further with this build, we do actually kind of need to rebuild it a little bit. So you can't really see it because that box is hidden over another one. But this is the Ultor MUR upper receiver, which is really the main piece of the weapon. You have the, the lower for the M4, which you can't seem to access directly this wipe anymore. I think it's maybe a bug, but I'm still trying to figure that out. And then on top of that, you put the upper receiver. This is normally the M4 A1 upper when you normally get it from the traders or whatever. But if you do some of the barters, you can get the MUR, which is very, very good. And this thing has minus four recoil and eight ergonomics, but you can do better than this now. These days, there is a new receiver, which has been in there for a while. It's the AX15, not to be confused with the TX15, but the AX15 receiver. And this one has minus 3% recoil, so you do lose one point of recoil, but you gain six ergonomics. Now, this thing was meta even before the recoil was adjusted in patch 14. Now that recoil is way easy to control and the actual changes in recoil, like going from 55 recoil to 50 recoil just doesn't matter as much anymore. Ergonomics is pretty important. And this is really the critical point about this gun being in the mid thirties doesn't really feel that good, especially with LPVOs. And you want to be able to use your drum mag properly. And there are ways of making this gun much better on ergonomics so that it feels snappy like a tactical M4 while still retaining 60 rounds, which is what we're going to do. And this AX15 is part of this. So we are unfortunately going to have to Click this on, which deletes half of the gun, which is really annoying. I'm not going to mess around too much with the handguard because the SAI QD is the best handguard, honestly. There are only two with minus 3% recoil, at least as far as I can remember. And one of them is this one, the Mark 10. This is something that I occasionally use on budget weapons. And this is minus three as well. But the ergo difference is about four between them. So we're going to keep on the SAI QD 14.5. Incidentally, this is the one that allows you to use the jailbreak. But we're not going to do that because it changes the feel of the gun and there's a lot of gas and stuff. So we'll ignore that for the time being. Now, barrels wise, this person continued to use the 370 mil barrel and there's nothing really wrong with that particularly. But there are two better barrels than this, the Hansen 13.7, which is kind of analogous to this one, and then the 16 inch, which I think is probably the best choice overall. This one has minus 5% recoil versus minus three, but the ergonomics on this is minus 15 rather than minus 14. So you're basically getting two points of recoil reduction without changing the ergo. You can actually make the ergo even higher. Like I just think this is best balance for this particular build. You can make this higher by going for the 13.7 because this has the same recoil and two less ergo. But I think I prefer the one with the slightly higher recoil reduction because we're getting ergo from other places. Like once we finish, you'll see we end up with quite a bit. So we're gonna use the 16 inch. This is basically the meta barrel in the game as far as I'm concerned. Now, the next part, we need to put the gas block back on. Originally, this had the Mark 12. This is the easy one that you just get from low-level traders after you've completed a few gunsmiths. It's not really that hard to do. The low pro is a lot better, though. This one is just strictly better. It's just straight up. You've got 2% recoil on this, and 3 on this, and 1 ergo on this, and 1 ergo on this. You just gain a recoil point for a little bit of extra money. But at this point, we're talking about a meta gun, so that is fine to spend. 
Now, next up, in terms of a foregrip, we had the 4.1 on before, and that's okay. And this person was using the RK1. I just don't really like the RK1 very much. You get one ergo, and yes, you get minus 3% recoil. There are only a couple of foregrips that allow you to get minus 3% recoil. It's basically this one. And the, there's this new one here, Osovets, which is 3% as well, which is basically the same as the RK1. And then you have the RK2, which is minus 4. But this extra point of recoil, just not worth it. The minus 8 swing from plus 1 is like 9 ergo for 1 point of recoil. Just never worth it. And I tend to not think that this is worth it either. There is the CQR grip. Can't see it here. It's not compatible with this particular rail on this particular handguard. And that gives a couple more points of ergonomics for minus 3 as well. But these days, I pretty much exclusively go for something like the SE5. I think this is probably the best bang for buck balance because you get minus 2% recoil. You get 8 ergo instead. The RVG Black is a really good contender. The SE5 is quite high level attachment. I'm going to put it on here just for the purposes of this build, but one less ergo for the RVG, and you could just get this a Peacekeeper 3. This is probably my favorite foregrip in the whole game. I think it's extremely balanced and really, really good. Other than that, though, I think the other one that is pretty decent is the Cobra. The Cobra gives you one extra ergo. I don't think one ergo is worth losing one recoil here. Uh, you could also use the Cobra, especially if you're really starved for ergo. Some builds are like really low. Like I use the Cobra on something like the Ash 12, for example, where the recoil reduction isn't going to do anything. I'm just trying to get as much ergo as I can. Maybe you could even consider it on something like the SVD. So let's just put on the SE5. So this gives us an extra seven ergonomics to what we had before, losing a tiny piece of recoil. Now we're going to re-add our Griffin on the front because we spoke about that a moment ago. So we add the G-Lock and then we add the M4 SDK on top of this. Yeah, they can be kind of expensive on the flea. How much this one's going to be right now? Yeah, it's not that much actually. It's only 90k. Not that bad for a meta gun. So next up, we've got the Growl on here, which is the best pistol grip. This is fine. There's another one that is similar that people used to use, this Ergo one. But this one weighs a little bit more. Not that it really matters too much, but the Growl is typically the go-to. The Advanced Tube is also really good. This one gives you a lot of recoil reduction and ergonomics, so this is fine. And then we have the MOE and MOE rubber butt pad, which is a fine combination. There's nothing like necessarily wrong with this per se. If you're building up a gun from scratch, there's a new one, which I think is maybe a little bit better which is the Daniel's Defense. It depends on exactly how far you want to go with recoil and ergonomics. We'll keep this one on for the time being, but I'll show you the alternative in just a moment. You can see from the changes that we've made already, we're now at 62 ergonomics and 51 vertical recoil, which is crazy. We've actually got one recoil better than we had when we started. I'll show you the original build, actually. Let's just go back to the original build. Um, so this guy, and we're going to put the scope on in two seconds, but we'll go back to this guy. 36 ergo and 52 recoil. And, but now, without putting the scope on yet, we have 62 ergo and 51 recoil. So we're actually better on both. And I don't think this gun necessarily costs all that much more than the one we just looked at. We've just changed a few core pieces of this weapon. So let's go and add the scope back on. If you're building something high level, yeah, you can use the Lebev or something like that. Even the Night Force, they're fine. But if you want to boost up the ergo as best as you can, you can use this, the Geisley Rings. Now this one is weird because it looks red in here because you need it with the mount on top. But the funny thing about it is that it's half a point of ergonomics here. And when you add the little top on, you can technically put something on here where you can get an RMR on the little rail. But this doesn't give you any bonus, and I, I, I'm not really that keen on them. But you can add it if you want to. But I just close it off with the little ring, the ring top. And this also gives you half. So this scope mount overall actually gives you one point of ergonomics rather than taking it away. And so this is a swing of like two ergo. Because if you choose something like the Lebev, it's minus two. Okay? Or the Nightfall scope, it's minus two because this one is plus one and this one is minus one. That's an interesting thing to note. We'll stick the razor back in. This is minus four on its own. So this takes us down to 59 and 51. But I think this is an exceptional build. This is one of the amazing things about the M4 is that you can get really good ergo and be suppressed and have a drum and have an LPVO. It's, it's amazing, honestly. Like this mag is not completely full, but we're only at five kilos. And this we've nearly got a full mag's worth of, I think five, six, a one is in this guy. So the alternative on the stock that I was just talking about, we might say to ourselves, well, at this point, it doesn't really matter. And I think I would probably agree with you. This part is really like a micro adjustment. But if we put the recoil back to the way it was previously at 52, and we say, OK, that's a fine recoil to have, which it is, to be honest. I don't think, practically speaking, you'll ever see the difference between 51 and 52. Even if you test it in the hideout, I just don't think you'd ever be able to see the difference. So we could say, fine, well, maybe we go for a bit more ergo. And you could argue the same thing for ergo too. Will you even notice the ADS speed? Does it even hit a break point at which the frames are faster? Not really sure. But the other alternative, needless to say, on all of that is this one. The Daniels Defense ECB, Enhanced Collapsible Butt Stock. And this exists as of this particular patch. And this is a new stock and butt pad combination, which against 59 and 51, we have two choices on the butt pad. So we can either go for this one 
which takes us to 63 ergo and 54 recall. So we are adding two here to add four up there. Or the alternative is this guy here. So it actually removes a little bit of ergonomics, but it also takes the recall down too. And this puts us to 61 for 52. So we lose one recall point from 51, 52. And we gain two ergo from 59 to 61. So you might think that two for one is a decent trade. As I said, this is kind of a micro adjustment. This is a decision that you will make before you actually buy either of them. So I wouldn't swap either one to the other if it's already on the gun, let's put it that way. But I'm just showing you to make sure that we, you know, fully explore all of the possibilities within this particular weapon. Now, the other two little parts, which people always complain when I don't do this, but I, again, I think it's probably a micro adjustment, but you can add the Chris Defiance, which are the cheapest front and back sights, at least last time I checked. And these are the ones that give you plus one ergonomics. So you've got plus one here and plus one there, and that gets you to 63 in total. We already have the best charging handle on here, which is the Raptor. You can have either the Raptor or the Raptor Grey. It doesn't really make any difference. I think the Raptor one you could buy and the Raptor Grey is Fleoni or something, but they would already included this on the build. So we're going to keep it like that. And then I guess you just add like a flashlight or a laser or something if you really want to. But otherwise, this is pretty much it. So we've basically gone from, and again, I'll, I'll swap back just so you can see the difference. We've gone here from 36 ergonomics and 52 recoil to 63 ergonomics and 52 recoil. This gun should handle identically. The performance in ADS between these two is going to be night and day difference. So if you're going to be spending money on the gun, I think it's useful to appreciate some of the extra stuff that you can do to try and make it the best that you can be, because otherwise you're just going to end up costing yourself a lot of money, not really get that much out of it. And maybe, maybe that explains why I ended up killing this guy in the first place. I don't know. Finally, I'd just like to remind you about the music that we have for the channel. There are three albums now that you can find on Spotify in the link in the description. And when you listen to the music, it does genuinely help the channel out and support what I do. The music is made in conjunction with a company called Low Wave Records, and they help content creators to produce music that fits the vibe of their particular channel or exactly what they want to. And the idea is that the channels can benefit from this music as well as getting something unique at the same time. All the music is actually copyright and DMCA free as well, so you won't be taken down for using it in streams or videos or whatever you want. So if you need that, then just let me know. So if you do want to help me out, go over and check them out. There's a couple of albums, as I said, and there's enough music to get going for the moment, and there'll definitely be more coming down the line. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.